Hello everyone. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. So in our last topic, we have discussed about SAP system, Net, uh, Netweaver system architecture. So now we'll go into further details. And in this topic, we will discuss about the work process architecture as well as the different types of work process available in an ABAP system. Okay. So first we'll see like an instance sap instance what does it contain okay so we'll go into an overview of a work process and later we'll see what are the different types of work process in the abap server so user request processing from sap g1 after the users log on via the message server or directly through the abap dispatcher the user requests are executed by the work process so this work process are the basic uh, uh, things where you know which execute whatever user requests are sent to the SAP system. So from an SAP GUI when users log on from an SAP GUI it goes to the ABAP dispatcher or it comes from the message server and then via the ABAP dispatcher it goes the request is dispatched to the different types of work process available. Okay where the request is executed so these work process they contact the database they execute the request and they send it back to the dispatcher which is again sent to the sap gui so we, in the presentation layer we have the sap gui next in the application level we have the abap dispatcher and uh, memory some buffers okay and we have different types of work process d d d for d stands for dialogue E stands for NQ, V stands for update, B is the background or the batch process and S stands for spool. Okay, and at the bottom we have the database layer. Now, apart from these work process, we also have some services like the message server is one of the service. Next one is the gateway service and the ICM. Okay. Now coming to the ABAP dispatcher, this ABAP dispatcher distributes the request among the work process. So the ABAP dispatcher is responsible for distributing the request to various work process. Then it organizes the communication activities. So the dispatcher is responsible for organization among the communication between various work process. And it manages the resources for the applications written in ABAP in coordination with the respective operating system so the dispatcher manages all the work process resources and it integrates the presentation layer so the disp dispatcher is responsible for the communication with the presentation layer and it saves the processing requests in request queues and then processes them according to the first in first out principle so the dispatcher it has a queue where it puts all the requests coming from the SAP GUI okay or it can be from the web also and then it dispatches them one by one according to the first in first out basis so dispatcher it helps in all these you know it takes care of all these tasks okay and the work process are the ones which actually do the processing of an SAP request now the next one is process flow of requests now here we'll go into further depth and we'll see like what are the various components of a work process now before going to that we'll just see about buffer this buffer we have seen something like buffer here okay so it is in the application server memory now the buffers help to speed up the processing of user requests data that is often read but seldom changed for example programs or customizing data such as clients currencies or company codes can be kept as a copy of the database content in the shared memory of the application server this means that data does not need to be read from database every time it is needed and can be called quickly from the buffer each instance has its own buffers so every time like when they are frequently accessed objects like tables or whatever it is programs those every time need not 
uh, you know an IO request need not be sent to database every time rather they are stored in this buffer so it's it's present in the shared memory of an application server we have different buffers like screen buffers like every screen each screen of an SAP like they are stored in some buffer ABAP programs tables other dictionary objects factory calendar etc these form the buffer and the other important area of the buffer is the role area where the user context is stored okay so I'll just come to know what is this user context is the dialogue work process selected by the dispatcher first performs a role in of the user context the data that contains the current processing status of the running program as well as the data that characterizes the user is made known to the work process the work process then processes the user request which may involve for example requesting data from the database or the buffers in the shared memory after the dialog work process has processed the dialog setup the work process returns the result rolls the user context back to the shared memory and becomes available again for a new user request from the request queue the result is transferred to the sap gui and the user sees the new screen so what this role role area we have mentioned here apart from the buffers the shared memory has something known as role area which contains the user context so user context is nothing but previously also we have read like sap has you know it performs something known as work process multiplexing like the entire whatever program you run need not be run by one work process okay so different work process can process your request so when this information like what all information that has to be transferred from one work process to the other like what is the present user what he is running like which program is running which database object is being you know used in that program all the set of information is known as the user context okay so this user context is stored in that role area okay so say like work process a is processing my request now so after that is completed it will put it whatever all this information in that role area and it becomes free now again work process b will get that information from the role area so that it can do the processing so this user context is nothing but the data that contains the current processing status of the running program as well as the data that characterizes the user is made known to the work process so that is known as user context so whenever a work process has to do some processing for a particular program and from a user it gets that information that user context into the work process internal memory and once it completes the processing it will send it back to the shared memory role area role area in the shared memory so it performs a role in and then it does a role out okay so that is about buffer so the shared memory will have buffers as well as a role area which has the user context now now we'll go into the individual components of a work process there can be n number of work process in the sap instance the first one is it has some internal memory where it has to store this user context now a work process has a task handler that coordinates the action within a work process software process and a database interface so this task handler is responsible for coordination among the various components in the work process like each of this has to communicate right so the task handler takes care of that the dinpro processor that is the screen processor executes the screen flow logic of the application program calls the processing logic modules and transfers field content to the processing logic so the screen processor is responsible for the screen flow logic of the application program say like i am executing a program so whatever screen has to be presented for that program next it will go to the next screen so all that you know the screen flow logic is taken care by this screen processor next one the app interpreter executes the actual 
processing logic of the ABAP application programs. The screen processor informs the ABAP processor about the subprogram that needs to be executed depending on the processing state of the screen flow logic. So each program will have its own screen. Okay. So these two communicate. The screen processor gives information to the ABAP interpreter like what has to be actually executed from in that screen. And we are now left with this database interface. Now, the database interface, which is a part of every work process of application server ABAP, translates open SQL statements from ABAP into the corresponding SQL statements for the specific database used. That is the native SQL. This allows ABAP programs to be database independent. Okay. So, the database interface is the actual one which translates ABAP statements are written in open SQL. That is, they are da database independent. So, this database interface converts all these open SQL statements into the native SQL statements which are actually understood by the database. So, my ABAP program, whatever statements are right there, it's open SQL. So, in the back end, you can have Oracle or DB2. Okay. So, this respective program has to be converted into the Oracle SQL syntax or whatever DB2 syntax. So, that conversion is done by this database interface. And in addition to that, you can also use native SQL commands directly in a BAP without using the local buffers and having the database interface interpret the commands. So, in addition to the open SQL statements, you can directly uh, write in your programs the native SQL statements. Okay. So, these uh, native SQL, uh, uh, statements, once they are written, the database interface directly. These don't use the local buffers. Okay. So, uh, this database interface, when once it, uh, you know, encounters such statement in the ABAP program, then it will directly, uh, you know, communicate with the database for those statements. You can do this by including the commands in and exec sql and end exec bracket in the ABAP program. The ABAP interpreter does not check the syntax of any commands within this bracket. So, you can write native SQL statements also in the ABAP program using the start and the beginning are these two, exec, SQL and end, exec. Okay. So, when the ABAP program is written in between these two, so the ABAP interpreter will not check the syntax of this command. Okay. So, those statements are directly taken care by the database process. Okay. So, this database interface, like if open SQL statements are there, it will convert into native SQL and if it encounters any native SQL statements, then those are directly communicated from the database level and the ABAP interpreter will not check the syntax of these commands. Okay. So, this is a short topic. So, we have learned like what is dispatcher, what does it do? Then we have seen uh, about the shared memory it has some buffers and a role area which stores the user context and next we have seen the internal architecture of an sap work process okay so a work process is nothing but it's the main component which does the actual processing in an sap system okay now in our coming topic we'll see what are the different types of work process okay and their uses like each work process what you know job it has to perform thank you